Hi, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop and we're going to start tearing this apart to see why the owner decided to get rid of it. I went and grabbed a bucket to throw all the parts in, nuts and bolts so I can clean them. So let's get started tearing this apart. Now I already took off the bracket for the bagger. A lot of you guys know what these are, seen them, most of you have them. This is typically on the right hand side of your machine. It's a brace that goes around the rear bumper. And that helps the bumper support the weight of the bagger. Because a lot of them without this, the bumper will break right where that screw goes through that holds it on the back of the rear case. So typically you're supposed to get these when you buy a brand new bagger. You buy a used bagger, you typically don't get them. On this machine, however, this brace was on the left hand side and this brace was on the right hand side. Now that's probably an eighth of an inch thick steel. Both bumper bolts went through it and one case bolt. So I had to take these off first so I could leave the bumper on and stand it up. So we'll stick them over there. Now next we'll take off the spreader bar. Now this is about one of the few that I've ever seen that's not bent terribly. This has a little crown to it, not bad. Most of them are bent so bad, it's, uh, it's going to put a strain on your bushings. Now I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do to this. I know I'm going to rebuild it and I'm going to sell it, but I'm kind of leaning towards, I have, I think, two sets of fenders that accept bearings, not these crappy little bushings. I'm kind of leaning towards installing them fenders on this machine so I'll actually have ball bearings on the drive train. So I was going to use my impact to take all these bolts out, but this weather, my lean to is pretty cold and the compressor doesn't like to start. But I think I will run over and grab me a speed wrench. I do have a lot of stuff cleaned out of here. The wife has been selling a lot of her school stuff. And once I get the shop cleaned up and all the stuff out, I am going to have the snapper on that side where my big toolbox is. And this side of the building is going to be woodworking. I want to get back into my woodworking. And I think most of the viewers would rather I did because my viewing is dropped way down. Now we're going to take the boots loose so I can just pull this drivetrain right out of here. And they have all these hose clamps facing downward. So when the machine's standing up, they're sticking right out at here so you can get a wrench on. Except for this one over here. They've got this slot in the fender. 
it used to, it kind of puzzled me why they would do that but one of my viewers said that's so you can stick your screwdriver through and get on that clamp it would have been nice if they would have lined that up you know As I don't think this machine has ever been tore apart before now I tell people if you got to replace both of your boots take your right hand fender off pull it out your chain case will stay there and so will your boots but I loosened the both of these up so they're probably going to fall out of, out of place take this last bolt out and we should be able to pull this out as long as I don't have a burr on the end of my hexagon tube. And as bad as my side play is, oh yeah, we got a nice burr on there. So we're going to have to file that off before I can get it apart. got quite a bit of filing to do <laughs> so let me grab a file and I'll be right back okay got that filed you just need a just a standard file you want to hold the hexagon shaft so it's the file lays on it flat you don't want to round it off or anything now obviously the shaft is going to be short because of all the wear. Doesn't mean you have to replace it. Just put more spacers in. The thrust washer that's supposed to snap into the end of the shaft, I can see most all the teeth are gone. You want that to snap in the shaft so it will rotate with the shaft. So let's see if we can get this jerked out of here. And it comes out in one piece. Now the reason I tell people, if you're going to replace both of your boots, pull the right hand fender off the machine, just like we did because a lot of times if your wheel flange is stuck on the right hand side you don't need to take that off if you're a big guy you don't even need to take the tire off pull it out stand it up on its tire and you can replace both boots with no problems this boot is ripped I thought they would be in good shape. They didn't look bad. They will be replaced. Oh, here's my here's my thrust washer. And it only has it looks like three of the teeth left that's supposed to snap in the shaft. We'll clean all this stuff up in the mineral spirits throw the boots away now when I rebuild this I'm putting all new stuff in it the hexagon shaft will be new this cover as you can see see the hole through it that is from all of the side play. The cover will have to be replaced. I have three or four of them. No problem. The hexagon tube will be new. Both axles I believe. I'll have to look them over. If they have show any signs of wear where they rub in the bushings or in the bearings depending on what I decide to do they will be replaced. 
I'm pretty sure the large gear and chain will have to be replaced. The large gear will probably have to be just because of wear. The chain, they typically get stretched out. So we'll replace that. I'm going to totally rebuild the rear end on this thing. And when I sell it, I will give whoever buys it a year warranty on the entire machine, not the engine. I cannot control what people do with an engine. Run it low on oil, race at too many RPMs, if there's something wrong with the governor, I can't control that. But the machine I rebuild, they will get a one year warranty and I'll replace whatever wears out because of my installation. If you get a bad part, I can't control that. Once you pull out the entire drivetrain, the chain case will lift right out in one piece. It's absolutely the best way I found to do this. And the clutch disc looks to be fairly new. I'll keep that one for my own use. I'll put a brand new clutch on it. So this part of it is about all I need to take off. I guess I can take this fender off. And I'll match up to a set of my bearing fenders and see if they match as far as the holes I need to reassemble it. Most of them are the same. There are some differences. And I did file the burrs off off camera. I didn't think you wanted to sit there and watch me file burrs. Now this is one of the newer machines. I believe the engine said this was a 2006. And it has the lip seal built into the bushing. So you don't need the extra dust cap like it's on that side with the lip seal in it. I'll set that over there. Now this is the dust cap I'm talking about. Let me figure out what I did on my nut driver. Take this clamp off. That's really on there. Some of these machines they paint partially assembled and then they finish assembling it and if the paint isn't completely dry it's better than glue. Now this is the dust cap and lip seal that's on the right hand side and if you look down in there you can see that little ridge that's the lip seal and I have a trick for getting them lip seals out of there because if you look where the lip seal is, is larger than the rest. This kind of reminds me of heat shrink tubing, which it's probably not. But if you throw this, it's very stiff right now. If you throw this into a cup of hot water, let it set for a couple minutes, you can pull that right out and pop a new one right in. This becomes very pliable. Now if you have a machine that has bearings in the fenders and you're trying to get that cap off, I'm not too worried about that one. I just jerked it off of there because I can buy them. The fenders with the bearings, this cap that goes on this side and the cap that goes on the other bearing are obsolete. I have not found a source yet for them. I got a couple more suppliers I need to call. 
And if I can find them, I'll probably buy a dozen sets. So, let's move this out of the way. I'm going to get my board up here that I use for assembling and disassembling these. And we'll pull this thing apart. So, let me put you on pause for a minute and I'll get ready. Okay, sorry I had to get rid of my flannel. I built a fire this morning and it's getting nice in here. <laughs> I won't tell you how nice, but it's really nice. <laughs> We're going to put this thing in our little board. And I have some paper clips here, these really large clips. And I have a garbage bag clipped to the bottom of this board so if there's anything in there that's still liquidy, I'm still not sure that's a word, it'll go in the bag. We'll take the nut off this big bolt. It wants to turn on me. We'll throw that in our bucket of parts. Now we need a socket for these. Bad guess. And we'll pull these off. A lot of these bolts seem to be a little loose as far as I was concerned. Especially the ones that held the fenders on. I, I'm not sure why. Maybe someone took this apart or started to and then just decided it wasn't worth fixing. But as soon as I seen it, I knew this is something we're going to want to fix. Now there's 13 of these bolts around here. And one is black. So that's been replaced. So maybe that dealer actually opened this up and looked at it. Oh, we lost that one. And I got something for John. John, John you're going to love this. What do you think? It's kind of a joke between me and John. But I guess I can let you all in on it. The uh, casters on my chair have been squeaking terrible since a buddy of mine at work gave it to me. It's kind of a nice little chair for what I do, so I hung on to it. Yeah, this has been a part because you always have to pry them open. And the gasket looks pretty new. I have never got one to come off in one piece. But we will we will replace that. Now, this is kind of strange. Along with this wonderful snapper lube that you can see is still running and lubricating everything really nice. They have some blue silicone grease in there. And as clean as this is, yeah, this has been taken apart. I don't know what all 
that he found that he thought was beyond repairing this, but so far I haven't seen anything that bad. Let's pull the axle out, find a place to put it. Things are getting a little messy here. I can't, can't really see what the gears look like on the axles till I clean this good, but they don't look bad. And either does the teeth on the large gear. They still have a, get that shiny spot, they still have a pretty good flat on them. But it is worn. That flat should be much wider. And I have a gear, a new one, I'll be putting on that. This is really, now the dripping you see is the water from when I power wash this. But here's some more snapper lube on the chain and it doesn't appear to be moving around to me. The sprocket looks pretty good and the gear on the sprocket has very nice flat spots on them. The sprocket, I'll have to compare that to the new one I got and see if that's... yeah there's some wear here. I don't like the looks of that. There's some wear right here you can see where the chain's been wearing. So that means I'll probably replace this sprocket and that chain. I can't get that in my bucket. I'm going to have to get a larger bucket. I don't know where the... <laughs> it's not in here. The cone-shaped washer and o-ring that's supposed to be on the top they never put back in here the one on the bottom is still there and without that cone-shaped washer in place you can't tighten this up properly. But I guess from what he's seen when he had it tore apart, he didn't really care. You just put it back together. We'll take the hexagon tube out. And the thrust washer that's supposed to be up here. Uh, I don't even recognize that. That is supposed to be a nylon thrust washer that seals against the inside of the case. Now I suppose that could have got ground away when it was grinding a hole through the case. I guess I'll just lay that there. Like I said, that will be replaced. Dump some of this water out. And I can show you a little bit better look at this. <laughs> this is your snapper lube, guys. That's supposed to be lubricating things. How that's supposed to work in the condition it's in, I don't even want to go there because I'm going to get in trouble. But here's the 
it's not cut completely around but you can see that this here is shot and that is what was causing it to bind up and not work we're just going to throw that whole thing in the garbage bag because I certainly am not going to use that So that's the problem with the rear end. I don't see much wrong with the axle or the pinion gears. The large 63 tooth gear has a probably half of the flat on it it's supposed to have. Um, so I will replace that. I got to get it cleaned up at work to see what if the axles are going to get replaced or, or reused. So I guess at this point, that's about as far as I can go on tearing this part. This is the last day of my vacation. Sunday, January 2nd, 2022. Don't forget to write that on your checks. <laughs> I went to the bank the other day, Saturday, I think. The lady says, yep. The lady at work says, she says, I'm going to be screwing up for at least a month and putting 21, and I think we all probably will. So that's it. Um, we'll get things cleaned up, and I'll get back with you and show you what everything looks like. And, uh, well, I guess, wait a minute. Why don't we open this thing up and see what it looks like? I'm not going to put this thing back together without at least cleaning the inside of this out. And we'll see what the chain, the bearings, and the sprockets look like. We may have to replace some of them. see anything wrong with the case on this chain case so I don't think I'm going to have to replace that I wish you could have got my air compressor running I have a very large I used to have a craftsman I don't know, 12 gallon compressor. And my father in law had this big one. It's got probably an 80 gallon tank on it. It's a five horse pump and motor. But I've been wondering lately, especially in the winter, um, if I should have a bigger motor on it because it doesn't want to start when it's cold and yes I have the parts on there that drains the pressure out of the head or off the piston when it shuts down because if you don't have that hooked up right it won't even start in the summer Now I may have to get a couple putty knives to pop this thing open, unless they've had this apart. All these screws seem to be pretty tight.
chase this thing all over the shop, I guess. take out of here to get the break off. And that lets the bottom of the case separate. Now I have some pictures you guys that are getting a hold of me and telling me that no matter what I do, my drivetrain is still not working. Well, some of the guys have not got back with me to tell me what machine style or body style they have. There's three basic ones or terminology that I use. The Snapper Classic has a round tube. The SR machine has the rectangular tube. And the turtle is the new style they made in 2013 to 2018. And this I don't think this has been a part. You want to be careful you don't pry too hard on this so that you don't bend the case. Yeah, if we can get it apart, I don't know. Here it comes. Now to get back and let you know about a ultrasonic cleaner. I have been looking and I have found one that's made in the United States. But I don't think I'm going to be buying one of them. This does not want to come out of here. I guess I'm going to put you on hold and go get a pry bar to pop that out of that bearing. Be right okay, back. I finally got that pressed out. I did not want to come apart. I'm assuming the bearing is shot. But bottom one feels good. The top one's still rotating, but I don't like the way I had to press it out of there. It's uh, I don't know why it fits so tight. But there again, here's your wonderful snapper lube. So we'll finish tearing that apart. We'll put the uh, sprockets in a little bit bigger container. I'm not going to get them in there. We'll take them to work tomorrow and throw them in the tank and let them soak. And uh, I did lay this down and roll it on the bench. I don't know if you can really see much. And 
I would say that thing is straight. That's probably the only the second one I've ever seen that's straight without being bent. Oh, that was good. I'm glad I got a sink and hot water out here to try to get some of this grease off before I go in the house. So that's it. We got this tore apart. As I figured, the grease is totally worthless. So we'll clean everything up. And when I get it cleaned up, we'll do another video and show you what everything really looks like. And I'll order the parts I need. Then I'll stick this thing back together. So, until next time, please subscribe. I need subscribers. Oh, I was starting to tell you about my ultrasonic cleaner I found. That's made in the United States of America. And it carries a 10-year warranty. The ones I found online... They won't even get back with me to tell me if they even have a warranty, let alone how long it is. So I would love to buy this one that's made in America. <laughs> there's a, well, there's a big problem. For the 16 liter machine online was three hundred and ninety dollars the one made in the United States is thirty three hundred dollars now I've got almost fifteen thousand subscribers if everybody wants to send me fifty cents or a buck we'll buy the one made in America and see just how well it really does work otherwise I guess I'll keep that piece of crap I got from Harbor Freight and I just have to beat on it to get it going and it usually starts working this stuff though will clean up before we throw it in there so again please subscribe I need subscribers I'm losing more than I'm gaining. That's why I think I'm going to start getting into woodworking. And uh, I will continue to do this. So until next time, work safe, have fun, and keep on snapping, my friend. We'll talk to you soon. So long.